good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on board tonight um, to our seminar. Um, we're trusting and believing God that it's going to be a fruitful evening. Um, as with all things that we do, we're going to start with praying, and we're also going to um, have a session of worship. Um, this will give us time to serenade God, as well as give other people time to log in as we kickstart the seminar. We're going to hand over to our guests once it's 7.15 by God's special grace. Um, can I call on Dickin Abo? Um, just give us a few seconds um, prayer as we kickstart this meeting this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And welcome everybody on board. I want to thank God. If you can please join me in prayer, just to kickstart in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Father, without you, we are nothing, Father. You said you are the vine and we are the branches, Father. But without you, we are nothing. King of kings, we thank you for such a wonderful day. We thank you for those who are online and those who are about to, those who have it in their hearts to join, Father. Father, whatever that is blocking them, Father, whatever that is going to cause any delay, Father, make a way for them, Father, to be able to join and benefit in this wonderful program in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every speaker, over our guest speakers, Father, King of Kings. Father, I say wisdom is from you. If anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask, Father. We seek, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will enlighten them. You will speak to them, Father, that all of us who are about to listen to this program, we will, we will benefit a lot in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you said, except you build a house, the labor in vain that we do. Father, King of Kings, except you walk over a city, the watchman stayed awake in vain. Father, King of you, we commit everything unto you. We sanctify every word. Let every word that come out of the speakers, the guest, the guest speakers, mm -hmm. and everyone on this platform be meaningful and be fruitful to us that we yield so many benefits in our lives today and always. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dekin Abu, for leading us in that prayer. I'm going to now call on the choir. Joy, do you want to introduce the choir to us tonight? Praise, praise God. So today, um, we're just going to um, share um, the songs. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just, just begin to worship God. He's worthy of our praise. He is the Lord of Lords. Let's just thank God for another time in his presence. Father, we just bless your name, O oh God. Be glorified, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Father, take your place, O oh God. You're worthy of our praise, O oh God. No one compares to you, O oh God. Father, you're worthy of our praise. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted high. You're worthy of our praise.
like you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for being a great God. Thank you for being a great God. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your name. Thank you. Thank you so much. There truly is nobody like our God. Um, the world may change. The economy may change. Um, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, you know, but it's so exciting. Uh, the God that we serve is unchanging. And there's just like the choir have sang, absolutely nobody like our God. And it's such a joyful thing to have each one of you on the platform tonight. Um, there are no accidents. God had ordained that you will be on this platform on this very date. Um, someone pointed it out to us this morning that today is 11, 11, 22. And you will find no other date like this after today, the day where you add the day and the month together and you get the year. Trust me, there are no coincidences. It's a very unique date. And we're trusting God tonight that God is going to do something unique in your life, in my life tonight, in the name of Jesus. Um, just before we proceed, if you look on the list of uh, participants, you will see RCCG HOG questions. So if you have any question, please don't leave it to the end because you may forget as our guests are speaking and sharing from their wealth of knowledge. Um, if you please just put in the chat to HOG, um, RCCG HOG questions, your questions. So that at the end of the night, we will endeavor to go through those questions. And I'm sure that if we can't finish the questions, you know, I may liaise with our guest who would maybe give the answers and I will post those answers um, to us. So I'm trusting God it's going to be a beautiful evening. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, remain muted. Um, if you have questions, just put it in the chat and we would look into that to answering the questions. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest tonight. Um, there are pastors, uh, which have you know, in the invite, I didn't put pastors because they're coming tonight solely as financial coaches, but they're also pastoring pastors in the redeemed Christian Church of God, senior pastors. Incidentally, I've known each participant separately, and it's only until recently that I found out that a couple, you know, so I was actually quite um, excited about that. Praise the name of the Lord. They're financial mm -hmm. coaches. And um, their aim tonight is to teach us, to educate us financially. And the, the, what they do is help families out of um, debt, to become debt free. And what they also do is teach us on how to gain financial independence. And I'm sure if I did say by a show of hand, how many people want financial freedom? Of course, many of us will have our hands up, our feet up, you know, everything else up, you know, that we can use to identify tonight that we're believing God. So. Um, listen rapidly, and my prayer is that the word you need to hear to bring a change in your financial circumstance, tonight you will hear it, you know, and that's why, mm -hmm. you know, when Dick and Abu was praying, and I said, God, whatever you've ordained for them to speak, they will speak. So if I were you, as they're speaking, say, God, I want a specific word that I can run with, you know, because this seminar will be pointless if we walk away from here and we have nothing to apply. So your prayer is, God, as they're speaking, give me a word I can run with in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to introduce Amen. to you, Pastor Stunji and Yinka Ogedengbe. You're most welcome on board. Let's make them feel welcome. I know you can't speak, but you can thumbs up. You can clap in the background wherever you are. Let's make them feel welcome. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you in House of God. We've been looking forward to this day, and God has eventually made it a reality, and we're excited and you can see by the way, by the show of hand, that we're looking forward to the gem God is going to release through both of you tonight. Over to you, sir, and Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Pastor Lola. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, House Good evening. of God. Um, God bless you all. Thank you so much, Pastor Lola, for this wonderful invitation. Um, we're not taking it for granted. Um, house of God, you've got a wonderful pastor um, in the house, a gorgeous woman of God, a worshiper. I love, oh, God bless the choir. I, I, if I was just swimming in the, in the worship. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much, ma'am. 
for yeah, having us. Um, Pastor Lola is a go-getter because um, she saw us doing the same thing. And she said, you guys need to come to my church. So you are all favored, honestly. You are all favored. You are all in the right place. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for um, having us tonight. So let us just do a quick uh, word of prayer before we go to the seminar. Let's just bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We are grateful for this night, Lord. Thank you for financial breakthrough and breaking forth for every one of us. We thank you because we know that you graciously provide all our needs, oh God, according to your riches in glory. Uh, that's from Philippians 4.19. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you would provide for us. And from today, we would never lack in the mighty name of Jesus. We put the trust of all our finances in your hands in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that after tonight, Lord, you will give us a lot of opportunities and a lot of knowledge and wisdom to go forth and build your kingdom. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank, we're going to show you a short video of about three to four minutes. Uh, let me just make it happen first of all. Um, let me put the sound on. Just a second. Okay. Yeah. Salary uh, drops. Payday. <laughs> Please, can you hear? Did, did, did anybody hear the first? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. How far? I can see the light is still working. Or your shop shop runner there. I guess I need my light. Yep, thank you. Wait, mate. Oh, yeah, it's just 200 quid, isn't it? Yeah, run it sharply, innit? I know you know your bean has been collected and you like how clean the environment is. All right, sharp, sharp, yeah, run them. Hey, it's Mr. Detaman, Instagram, Twitter, you know? <laughs> I believe you got our text message. Of course you did, because your phone is still on. Oh yeah, sharp, sharp, eh? Yes, we have another package. With 20 more pounds, we can double your data. <laughs> All right. Bye. Man them, scroll up, man. I see you're still enjoying the car. I mean, if you're not, it's fine. We have the spare key to take the car if you don't want it anymore. <laughs> take care, man. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> spare key. <laughs> Yeah, we'll need it. 
Uh, you can choose to leave it though because we are. Hello? Yeah, brother, because I need to go send money. School fees is due, house rent is due. There is no food in the house. Please send money. SOS, emergency call. Send money. 500,000 will do. I'm hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm Yes, I'm, I'm sure what you've just watched now rings a bell to many of us. And uh, what we are here today is to see how we can manage that process. My wife will kick up the uh, seminar whilst I will take over later. Okay. Okay, thank you um for this invite again so um the little clip that we watched that's exactly what is happening you know in most people's homes and so tonight we will be talking about how to become financially independent so the things that we're going to review for ourselves um this evening is first of all you know your goals and your dreams Everyone needs goals. Everyone needs dream when it comes to finances. Without a goal written down or a dream written down, we will not be able to get to where we're going to. So this evening, um, as the pastor said, just write on the chat, you know, what are your goals? What are your dreams? And the second part of it will be your budget, your, you know, especially your personal budget. Um, which includes your income, savings, and expenses. And we'll also be telling you about the 7 10, 10, 10 principle, very important in your financial journey. And the same thing goes for the debt management as well, which every one of us know about it. You know, debt is an obstacle to achieving our goals and our dreams every time we find ourselves in debt we're not able you know to be able to achieve our goals and our dreams and the next one will be um discussing about income management you know diversify and leverage on your income earnings potentials and the last one will be about how you can protect your assets how you can protect your assets. Thank you. So you see, um, in this world that we live in today, as you all know, earnings are not increasing, unfortunately. I don't know how many people that um, their income has um, increased recently. And also, <laughs> jobs are getting more difficult to get by especially some of us whereby now, because during the time of COVID up till now, one person has to start doing two or three people's jobs. And then retirement age is increasing. Cost of living is also on the increase, as we all know. And we are living longer, you know, than before. So tonight, how we can live with boldness and confidence every day in our finances. We all know it's easy to lose sight, you know, of the heavenly power of God at work in our lives during times of hardship, exhaustion, stress, and change. But no matter the situation, whether it's our health, our marriage, our finances, our family, or vocation, God has equipped us with the power and influence to live freely and confidently. So we're holding onto 
the power of God tonight. Many people lack confidence, as you know, in their financial knowledge, which means they are not financially literate because all they do is to work, work, work and pay bills. But life is not like that. We need to shift, you know, and have a better understanding of our finances. And that's why we're here tonight. So please ask yourself, do I have a budget? Because you need a budget to be able to be financially independent. Also, have you started planning for your retirement? And how much do you put aside on a monthly basis? This is very important. Before we know it, we find ourselves, you know, in the group of 60s or 50s, and you think you can retire without any money in your pocket. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes ago, we, there was a survey of a um, hundred workers in United Kingdom, um, they, and they were all sixty-seven years old, sixty-seven years old. And by the time we gave them a survey to find out where they were financially at this sixty-seven years old age, only one of them is wealthy. That's right, yeah. Uh, four of them are financially independent. 41 are still working and 54 are dead broke. Please put, also put on the chart the second assignment for today. Out of these four, which category would you like to be? Where do you want to see yourself? If you are not 67 years old as at now, by the time you get to 67 years old, let's know the category you would want to be. At the end of the week or month, do you have less money than you need? Or does it seem that your purse or your wallet contains holes, you know, whereby the money is just going without you knowing how? Are you working so hard now that you don't have time to enjoy yourself? You don't go on holidays. You don't have time for your family. You're going different shifts, four, three, four, five shifts in a day. Or do you dislike the job and wish you could find the perfect career? Many people face stressful challenges like this without knowing it on a daily basis. And this is why we're here today, so that we'll be able to help you out. So where are you now? Where are you now? Is it another question for yourself? Are you in debt? Are you struggling? Are you someone with no direction? Are you someone with no money? Are you someone with no hope or no progress? Okay, the question here is, how does it make you feel? How does this make you feel? And what if you can change nothing? Can the government help you? Beloved, I want you to know one thing tonight, that in all this we're saying, your personal economy is your responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility. It's not the government responsibility. It's your pers personal responsibility. And you must take ownership of your personal financial situation from today. No matter where, what position you are, you must now take, start taking responsibility. So the next question is financially as of today, where are you? Are you in debt? Having all the kinds of credit cards, personal loan, store cards, Hello. car loans, how about your earnings? Where's your earnings? Has it increased? Is it decreasing? And then the savings pot as well. Are you, do you have any savings at all? And if you do, are you investing it properly? And if you don't, what can you do to start saving from today? So where do you see yourself now? Or where do you want to be, you know, Considering where you are at this junction financially, where do you want to be 
in the next 12 months. Do you want to have, um, maybe, you know, um, pay off all your debts? Do you think by next 12 months, your earnings would have increased? And do you also think that after this seminar in the next 12 months, your savings would have been in the right place? So I will now pass over to uh, Tunji. We will continue from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Inka, for that. Um, <clears throat> one of the key things in life is we need to leave a legacy for our children. When I first came to this country and I went to a shop and it was written on top there, this shop started in 1895. And I said to myself, what is, what is the point of writing on top of the shop that this shop started in 1895? But there was a legacy there. That um, shop started by the great, great, great grandfather, handed over to the great grandfather, the grandfather of handed over to the son. Hmm. And that is what we call legacy. What have you got to hand over to your children? And legacy is a gift or a bequest that is handed down, endowed, and conveyed from one person to do another, to another. We are all Christians here, and the Bible tells us. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Many of us, we can't even leave anything for ourselves. These verses keeps our goals, our vision, and our legacy at the front and center of how we are choosing to use our money today. And the other areas we're going to cover today will be our savings, which Yinka has talked about, putting, putting money away into an account for the short term, and also for the long term, and also investments, putting money in assets for long term gain and capital appreciation. For example, buying properties and investing in stocks and shares, and also pensions, money money available to live on during our retirement. Then we have wills and trusts. This is official instructions on how our estate should be shared when we are no more here, and. The final one is the financial plan, which is one key element, which we call the MOT of finances. Each one of you with a car here, you have annual MOT. Without the MOT, your car cannot be on the, on the road. And also, for each one of you, you must also have an annual health check to know what is going on. And the same thing, the same thing must happen to your finances. On an annual basis, you must have a free financial game plan, which is, is something that we offer free of charge. We don't charge for it. We just sit down with you online and we will discuss your finances with you, see where you are, and we will direct give you, give you direction. Now we talk about savings. Money that you put in an account to meet your short-term needs. Uh, types of savings accounts are the traditional or the regular savings accounts, which really does not yield you, yield you anything. Uh, you can always start with uh, ISA, which is tax-free, and uh, the Certificate of Deposit and High-Yielding Savings Account. I remember as a very young boy, my mom gave me um, a piggy with a hole where I was dropping money. And that was at that very young age is what, that I realized you could start saving at a very young age. And when a piggy bank fills up, my mom takes it to the bank, and whenever I want anything, okay, you've saved this amount, you can have this amount. And that is the same thing. We need to start our children in particular at a at very, very young. Let them know the principles of savings. Investment is an asset or an item acquired with a goal of generating income or appreciation. The reality of it is if you don't have savings, you cannot have investments. You must have income, you must generate income to have investments because some of these investments are there's a risk in having investments, mm -hmm. in particular in investing and stocks and shares. There's a risk. We knew what happened to Britain a few months ago, uh, just before the changeover of government. The shares dropped. Then properties also. Uh, properties appreciate in value, cash savings, fixed interest securities, loan, loan money to government bonds. So these are 
types of investment that you should need to look at. You might not have the money today, but one thing you need to do is start looking at, start learning about investments. How can you invest? For example, how can I invest in the north of England? How can I buy properties in the north of England? What do I need to do? You can go to seminars that offer those, those kind of um, courses to you. And we do it as well. Pension, pension, pension. This is something many of us at a very young age, we, we don't even think about it. Oh, I'm 30 today. Oh, I can't be thinking of pension. I need to enjoy myself. I need to buy a nice car. I need to buy yuppie clothes. Well, what, why am I thinking about pension? But you know something? Life goes so fast. Life goes so fast. Before you know it, you're in your 30s. You're hitting your 40s. You're hitting your 50s. You're hitting your 60s. And income available to retire. To retire. We must plan ahead for our retirement. Um, unfortunately, we are in a country where older people are in homes. And I'm sure that we don't want to end up in a home ourselves. If you, are em if you are employed, I will encourage you to have what you call the employer pension. You, you contribute to it. The employer also contributes to it. And we have the state pension. The state pension is determinant on your national insurance contribution. So for example, if you are self-employed and you don't contribute any national insurance, when that time comes, you will not get any state benefits. And then we have the private pension. Which is good for everyone. Which is definitely good for everyone. We have wills and trusts. And a will is a legal document that states a person's financial wishes on how they would like their estates to be shared. Many of us will say, but I have only one wife. Why do I need a will? Why do I need a trust? But one thing you don't realize is, we have children, you don't know how they will relate to each other when you're not here anymore. In the UK, 70% of adults in the UK do not have a will. Unfortunately, we don't have an up-to-date statistics, but in 2013, the United Kingdom government gained 33.5 million from people who died without a will. And proper estate planning promotes family harmony. To have a will is very, very inexpensive. You just, you just need to have one. And I will give you an example talking about wills. Uh, recent news regarding not having a will about a few Nigerians who lived in this country 30 years ago. The United Kingdom published the names of dead Nigerians with unclaimed estates and assets. This was contained in United Kingdom's government treasury solicitor website, which was last updated on the 8th of September. The unclaimed estates have a 30 year time limit from the date of death before it is removed if no person comes to claim ownership. So that means these Nigerians, for the past 30 years, nobody has come to claim their estate or their, or their assets. And the interesting thing is, members of their family could be suffering seriously, either in this country or back home in Nigeria. And not knowing that their dead uh, family member left something behind. Everybody and unfortunately, that. this is going to become the king's, I will have said the queen, it will now become the king's property. And this is not, this is just about Nigerians here that we're talking about. And to get entitlement to the properties, one, one will need to get a probate solicitor or a practitioner in UK to help and guide them through the process of obtaining letters of administration. This is really very sad and really, really, really unfortunate. Now, cost of living is something that the government is talking about, everybody is talking about. And the cost of living is the amount of money that is needed to cover basic expenses as such as housing, food, taxes, energy price in a certain place and time period. As we all knew, as we all know, the cost of food suddenly just started going crazily high. Mm. And that was, that was when I realized that most of the food did not come from UK. It came from okay. other parts of Europe. And the impact of Brexit was major. And then 
the pandemic pandemic because during pandemic many of us we overstocked our houses the shops there if you if you go i'm sure that you remember during pandemic if you go to the stores like asda and sainsbury's most of the toilet there was no toilet roll there was no toilet roll vegetable oil all these things were not there so now the demand exceeded the supply the demand exceeded the supply and naturally that led to an increase in prices. And domestic gas price increased by 96%. Domestic electricity increased by 54%. The first time I personally felt the increase was when I went to the petrol station. Normally my tank gets filled by about 125 pounds if I want to fill the tank. And I was, I was reading the gauge and it got to 125 pounds and I was slowing down. But nothing happened. It was just it was just going on. It got to one fifty pounds, and I had to actually physically look under my car whether my petrol tank was leaking. And during the COVID, people started to buy. As I said, people started to buy more goods, and that led to a significant increase in price. We are going to cover. We are going to overcome this cost of living crisis. But we need to plan. We need to make a plan. We need to save. We need to save, we need to look at our expenses, analyze our expenses critically. Do you need this? Do you want this? Why the increase in price? As I said, COVID was an Im a big impact. Economists also agree that there were many factors, including energy bills, which have risen rapidly because of the high oil and gas prices. The war in, uh, in Russia also had a big impact. Uh, bills, unfortunately, bills have been rising and uh, they've been rising and rising and the war, as I said, the war in Ukraine has not had a, has had a very, very um, negative impact on that too. Now, Yinka mentioned earlier on today that our wages are not increasing and the pay increases for many people are not keeping up with the rising prices. Average wages, including bonuses, rose by 4.5, 4.7 in the year June 2022. But when you take inf inflation into account, the real value of that pay actually fell by 3% compared to 12 months ago. What this means in principle is the money you have today cannot buy what you could have bought three, five years ago. And if you are I, I'm sure that men also go shopping, so I will not say just women. Yeah. But if you go to Sainsbury's or Tesco's, under normal circumstances, you will know that once you've spent 95 pounds, the, the, the trolley is filled up. But today, you are spending 125 pounds, 130 pounds, the, the trolley is just at the bottom there. So that's the impact of the cost of living. And how do we overcome this cost of living crisis? We need to look at how we increase our, our pay. And increasing our pay doesn't mean working extra shift, killing yourself. No, extra work with additional, that is stressful and it's extremely tiring mm -hmm. and it really affects your health. Seeking government support, this is only available to those on low income. And I'm sure that you don't want to be on low income to be getting government support. There's the opportunity to start your own business with little or no capital. And that is an opportunity that we provide. Uh, we provide for people. You can start your own little business with little or no capital at all. You can earn as little as 1,000 to 2,000 pounds per month. Can you imagine working full time, earning 24,000 per annum, and also working part time, earning 24,000 pounds per annum, per annum, and with the opportunity of that increasing? Which one will you prefer? Will you prefer the job you go to that you don't enjoy or where you have your own business and your own business can increase, uh, can expand? So Yinka's number is there. Uh, you can write it down to give her, uh, to contact her and she will go through what you need to do. Um, there's no gimmick. There's no gimmick, there's no selling. Can I show you that? Now, as we know, the fall of the British pound is massive. And um, many of us online, we are, I'm not, I'm not assuming we're all Nigerians, but many of us are Nigerians. The same thing is happening 
to the Naira. When I first came on holiday to this country, the Naira was, one Naira was one pound. One pound. I still remember my parents changed 1,000 Naira. I got 977 pounds. And the three pounds was for commission. And in those days, you could spend Naira on the streets of London, on the streets of England, but that is not possible anymore. So the Naira is falling, the, the pounds is falling. And when, it's, when things like this happen, it impacts on the economy. Inflation, things, things start to increase. And the effect of the pound crashes is, has been witnessing a steep decline in the past few weeks, becoming a cause of concern for the UK economy. And one of the impacts of that was the sudden change in governments. Mm -hmm. uh, a prime minister that was there for only, I think, 42 days, that has never happened before. That has never, ever happened before. And UK imports becoming more expensive and UK exports becoming more competitive. And this leads to higher inflation. There's pressure on the interest rate. If you have a mortgage, for example, you will know that your interest rate is going higher. And even if you are renting a house, because the landlord's interest rate is going higher, yeah. he is also increasing the, um, the, the rent yeah. for the house. And in the UK, there'll be lots of confidence in the UK for investors. That is something that you might not see uh, from a local level, but nationally, investors lose, lose confidence. And because the UK is a net importer of oil and gas, a fall in the value of sterling has a, has a big impact on the prices of petrol and diesel, and that we have seen that on the on the on the on the stores of the petrol station. You see, let us look at life. Many of us we live on what we call a hundred and ten percent, and you are earning a hundred pounds, but you are living on one hundred and ten pounds. What that means is, one, you're either borrowing, you have a credit card, you are living more than your means. We must reduce our outgoings. We must do what? We must reduce our outgoings. Many of us, the clothes and shoes we have in our wardrobe, we can wear it for a lifetime. If, style, if the style doesn't change it, even our children and our grandchildren can wear it also for their lifetime. But because of change in style, they might not be interested in what mommy is wearing. And we must also find a way of increasing our income. And there's nothing beats having your own little business. Yeah. There's no point in looking good when you know you are suffering internally, you are suffering financially. Many of us, we go to church on Sunday. We don't want to wear the same dress or the same shirt we wore last week because somebody is going to say, oh, that lady, that was the dress she wore last week. You are not going to, you are going to worship God. You are going to worship God. And unfortunately, in particular in London, you have, I'm sorry to say this, you have women on low income. They go to parties every weekend with different materials, different gold, different shoes. And all these are bought on loan from friends. We can't continue like this. We cannot continue like this. We live in the United Kingdom and we must make something in the United Kingdom. We, we must not continue like that. How do we reduce our outgoings? Unfortunately, I have a picture of a lady here. Uh, this also applies to men. It's not only women, but uh, ladies like to buy good things for themselves. But we need to discipline ourselves. Um, I remember the early days of our marriage. Um, there was this shop that does sale. What's, what's the shop now? That does sale every year. And um, my wife, I think it's called, oh, it starts with H. Byrites. Not, not, not Byrites. And early in the morning, my wife will wake me up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Brand cross, brand cross. They're having sales. They're having sales. Next. Next. That is exactly. Next. She remembers. Next in brand cross. And she will wake me up from the bed. We will go to next. When we get there, there'll be a massive queue. 
80% of the queue are Nigerians. And when the door opens, everybody rushes in. And I just look at my wife. She will gather and gather and gather. And when we get home, we will now realize we don't need 50% 50, 50 of these things. Then we will return. So there was one year she woke me up and said, I am not going. You can go yourself this year. So we need to look at, do we need this or do we want it? And immediate gratification versus future goals. Your future goals is more important than your immediate gratification. You need to list what you spend money on and where you can cut back. That is the key. Write it on a piece of paper and what are the things that you cut back. If you are the one shopping in high class um, shops, then calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down to Aldi. Go to Lidl, yeah. go to the market, buy things in the market. Yeah. Women in the church, buy in bulk, buy bags of food in bulk and share, and share it amongst each other. You will find things a lot cheaper. Basically, if you want to reduce your outgoings, one of the key things, if you have credit card, you must cut it down. You must cut it immediately. My wife and I, in the early days of our marriage, we used to swim in credit cards. We used to swim in credit cards. And uh, God delivered us from credit cards. And we had a massive testimony when we finished paying our credit cards. We had a, There was a strategy we put in place, which we'll talk about later on. And you must find a way of increasing your income. As I said earlier on, we offer what we call a free financial game plan, which is like a sat down, a bridge between your current position and your goals and dreams. Many of us, we have goals and dreams, but we don't achieve it. Yeah. And this helps to provide information on debt elimination, family protection, family management, and your goals and your goal planning. Now there's something called life insurance. Life insurance is about legacy. Life insurance is about leaving something on when you are gone, leaving something for your children. You see, in this country, you will be surprised how people live. When they, when they die, they leave life insurance for their children so that their children will not live in poverty. Mm. And on average now, we live longer. Life insurance is as important as it protects your family unless you leave them a non-taxable amount at the death, at the time of death. In our church, um, one of my close friends died at the age of 55 and he left a very young family behind. But when we, when we were going through his finances, we thank God he left. The wife was a nurse, a low-income nurse, but it was, it was a high flyer. He was a project manager. And he had so much money coming in. But thank God he left so much. He left life insurance to cover the mortgage, to cover the mortgage, to cover his income for six months, and also to, to cover the, uh, the the funeral. So we thank God. And then because we do uh financial counseling for people who lose their husband or who lose their wives, and we've come across people where the husband left no life insurance. The husband just left debts, credit cards, the two cars in front of the house. The wife never knew that it was on credit. The letters just started coming. When I go there again, I say, Pastor Sunji, this is the bunch of letters I received yesterday. This is the bunch of letters I received yesterday. The church, we had to do um, a collection for her to bury, to bury the husband. Go funding. go funding. Thank you very much. And life insurance is also used to cover your mortgage, your personal loans, such as your car loans, your individual life insurance follows you when you retire and you're no longer insured by your employer. This is something that we also provide. And how much we, how much will your family need if something happened to either the husband or the wife? One, you must need a particular amount to cover the debt. Also, you must also need a particular amount because when one of the partners died, that income does not come in anymore. So you need at least one year's income to, be, to cover that one year's income, cover the mortgage. And if you, if you are providing education for your children, maybe there's a teacher coming in to teach them after school, you need to provide something also for them. 
You know, I told you that we were able to pay off our debts as quickly as possible. We're going to quickly rush, rush through this. We have what we call the fixed term amortizing debt and the revolving debt. And the fixed term amortizing debt has an end date. So, for example, a, 20, a 25-year-old repayment mortgage, a four-month car loan, a 60-month personal loan. And we have the revolving debt. Look at the revolving debt as if you are going into a hotel. And that door that revolves, it goes non, non, it just keeps on, it keeps on going around. That is where these are the dangerous debts, interest-only mortgage, overdraft accounts, credit cards, store cards. And we use this strategy to help us to uh, resolve our debts. We combine all our revolving debts and turn them into one fixed debt loan. And this can be used to free up monthly outlay so there's more money to work with for debt elimination and debt stacking. And also debt acceleration, you pay more for a credit card. For example, if your minimum uh, payment is £10, you pay £20, you pay £30. And that this eats it into the capital. It is so you have you pay it all off as quickly as possible. Then you have debt elimination. Once the debt is paid off, for example, you've paid off Max and Spencer credit card, the amount that you used to pay, don't stop it. Continue it on, a, on another card. So as quickly as possible, you are able to eliminate the, the debt as quickly as possible. You know, I've been, I've been emphasizing, it's time for you to start your own business. We cannot be in this country and be working for somebody. A time will come that they will tell you, I'm so sorry, you are very good at your job but we don't need you anymore. And I pray again that for you. Now, you start off as an employee. You have a job. Then a small part-time job on the side, maybe self-employed, maybe you are a barber, you are a caterer, um, you are a plumber, you are a carpenter, you are a car repairer. You have a small job on the side, so you are an employee and also self-employed. And suddenly that business grows then you now become a business owner. And when you become a business owner, you own a system that works for you. You employ staff. You are no more an employee. You are no more self-employed. And it's from a business owner, you have enough resources to invest. You become an investor. And when you become an investor, that is when money starts working for you rather than you working for money. We need to remember 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, godliness with contentment is great gain. Your legacy is every life you have touched, Maya Angelou. And in summary, the key areas of support from us to you is a free financial MOT by appointment, an opportunity to start your own business, an opportunity to offer you income protection, an opportunity to offer you private medical insurance, we know what is happening in the NHS. You go to the um, a and &E, you wait and wait and wait there. We also help you to review your life insurance policy, policy if you have one, or help you to implement if you don't have one. These are the key areas of support that we can offer for you. And uh, for a free financial game plan, this is our contacts there, either myself on 07908-638-703, or my wife on 07956-401-770. And um, lastly, just before we go into the questions, uh, there's a principle, a financial principle, that is called 70-10-10-10. Um, 70-10-10-10 will also help you to become financially independent. And that means that when you get your income, the 70% is all yours to do everything you need to do, including paying your bills. The 10%, it goes on your tight. Make sure you're tithing. The next 10% is an investment for you. Make sure you put that aside, no matter what, to invest. And the last 10% is charitable. So you have different charities. You're giving money away, blessing them. Believe you me, as a believer, it will come back to you, pressed down, 
shaking together, running over. If you go for the history of those who are really wealthy, this is a financial principle that they use. Thank you so much for having us this evening. And we put over back over to uh, Pastor Lola. Thank you, ma'am. Wow. Thank you oh, so thank you much. So Wow, that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to take um to take um back with us. Um, thank you so much for sharing that with us so swiftly. Um, questions. I'm looking at the chat. So if we have any questions, um, please can we put it in the chat? I know people have been listening, um, people haven't been typing questions, but I have one, I have one question, um, which I'm sure. It will be pertinent to many people. How do you get on the property ladder? Um, I, yes, we've heard about um, savings. You know, how do we get? You know, for someone who doesn't have anything to sell, how do we get on the property ladder? Um, yeah, thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Um, the prop. There are two elements to the property ladder. There's a first timer where you want to look for a house to buy. And there's a second element, which is for investments. Uh, let me assume that you are trying to buy a property for yourself. One of the key things that you need to look at, first of all, you need to, first of all, have a look at your income. And then look at the area where you want to live. Then make an arrangement with uh, an, uh, a mortgage advisor which is us, we can also advise you. We will give you um, the element of deposit that you will need to put down. And also how much will your repayment be? So because it's very important, and one of the key principles you need to look at is multiply your income by five. Because when you, when you are a couple, multiply your income by five. If you multiply your income by five and it comes to 200,000, what that is telling you is really the amount of mortgage you can get is for 200,000. And then you might say to yourself, maybe I, I have to relocate. Maybe I have to go up north. Houses are cheaper. Um, houses are a lot cheaper up north. Maybe we have a nurse, we had a nurse in our church. Um, she had to relocate because she couldn't buy a house in the area where the church was. Uh, but she, with her salary, they were able to buy a house near Sunderland. But if it's for investment, my suggestion to you is to attend property investment seminars and also have a look at the investors in the north. We have contacts of investors in the north. We can give you contact, those contacts and look at those properties where those agents can help you to manage those properties they will help you to collect the rent, they will deduct their commission, and they will put the money in your salary. So that's just, that's how it is. And, and also one of the things, the first thing that we look at is that you must be credit worthy. Yes. Very Make important. sure you're paying all your bills on time. Very important. Because that's what usually fails a lot of people. Fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I have another question here. Is it advisable? to have a credit card? Is it advisable to have a credit card? Um, the very important, if you have no credit in the land, if you, want, if you go to the bank and want to get a mortgage, they will not be able to find you because you've never had credit. So in that instance, you must you can have a credit card and manage it very well. As you are spending the money, you are paying off the following month. However, if you are using a credit card to offset your expenses, then that is where the problem is. Because some people assume credit card is like a part of their income. And that is where the danger is. But if you are using a credit card to build your credit or rebuilding your credit, there's nothing wrong with that. But to abuse the use of credit card or to use credit card to even pay your mortgage, that is bad. To use credit card to do your shopping in Sainsbury's and Tesco's, that is because at the end of the day, there's interest. 
So you're eating food and you're also praying interest on the food that you are, you are eating. That is a... So it's, it's good to just have one. We'll have one and uh, be sensible about it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I think I had I first had a taster of this a few years back um, when someone wanted me to help them to assist them by getting a loan. And then we went to the bank and the bank said, you're not credit worthy. And then we said, oh, what does that mean? They said, oh, well, you've never owed, owed anything before. So we don't know what your pattern would be when it comes to repayment. And that was how they turned her down. You know, and I just yes. thought, oh, wow. So that was my first taste of it. So now I actually understand what you've just um, said. Okay, I have a question here. So I'm looking at a different screen. Um, and someone would like for you to mention about FCA authorized funeral care plan for over 50, which is safe and important. Um, is that something you can throw more light on? FCA funeral plan. Yes, for over 50s. I think this guy's ready to just save money. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the FC, FCA funeral plan, um, but what I'm familiar about is when you are alive, you can have a funeral plan with a legitimate company that is registered with the Financial Control Authority. Um, those are legitimate organizations that you can have plans with. Um, that one I'm aware of. I'm aware of that. And uh, we, that is also something that we we offer. We can put a plan in place for you for against funeral funeral with a registered our company is registered with the company we work for is registered with the Financial Conduct Authority. And it's very important that everyone has that, especially now. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And um, you don't want people to start going for doing a GoFundMe, you know, on the social media, asking people uh, to give your loved ones a befitting burial. Because even if they do, what happens to your loved ones after a year? That same people that contributed money for the GoFund, they won't be there because everybody has their own financial pressure. So it's always good to be prepared and to plan. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, my thank you, sir, for answering that. Okay, someone wants to know: Do you provide a will writing um, service? Do you assist in will writing? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Wills and trust. Wills and trust. No, oh, thank you so much. That's fabulous. And I, I also want to reiterate how important it is to have a will. Not having a will just poses a lot of complexities that you don't. Is and and the thing is that it's is avoidable, you know. That's yes, the thing. Geez. And I think yes. the 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 African mindset is like, oh, if I write a will, am I calling death? No, you're just being smart. <laughs> you're not calling death. I mean, the the because I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to write a will. You know, it's not like I'm inviting death. I mean, I I wrote a will. I had to write a will in 2015 because I was a victim of this issue of not writing a will. You know, so I now know that it's important. And that was the very first thing I did that, you know what, I'm just gonna, and this is seven down line, seven years down the line. So writing a will doesn't mean that you're going to go. It just means that when you do go, um, your property is in place. Uh-huh, it's mm -hmm. in place. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the for more questions. Just bear with me. Okay, someone is also asking, how much does it cost? to get a will and trust, please? It depends. To be honest with you, it depends on your circumstances. We can't, we can't give you a fixed price and say this is a, this is how much it costs. But it's, it's when you start with a will, you have a will initially. And then when you can afford more, you can have a trust in place. What's the difference? I'm sorry to sound ignorant. What's the difference between the two, the will and the trust? The trust basically covers how how you want the will to be allocated in future and it puts the the uh it puts the allocation of the what your properties your assets you know for example if you have four children uh you might decide to give one 20 percent one 30 percent all those going into a trust on behalf of those of those children 
So it's a, there will be a trust in place on behalf of those children for the future. The will is just basically the principle that explains that you are you are leaving a will behind. You. And also with the trust, it's um, non-taxable. Oh, well. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I have another question. It says, if you were 21 again or under, what would you have done differently knowing what you know now? <laughs> oh, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Honestly, we, every time we're always regretting that um, we, we're not in that position at the time. And that's why we're going all the way to reach out to communities, to reach out to churches, different groups and let them know that they should not make the same mistakes we had made in the past. By now, honestly, we would have been better off financially. Um, I know we're all RCCG. One of our dream is that one day we're going to pay, just give that the GO the whole money for the convention and just pay it off. You know, so if we had if we had, had all this in place, that would that would have been done before now. And one of the key, <laughs> one of the key Things that question is very, very important is the element of start saving at a very early age. By age of 20, if you are 21, by age of 24, plan to have your first property. And by time, by that time, have the next property and become a property guru. So by the age of 30, for, by the age of 40, you can actually retire from your work and just on your investments. Your in, in your investments will be yielding you income, and you can go on holidays, three holidays, two holidays. Before before COVID, we used to go on two um, holiday twice a year, yeah. not because we are affluent, but because we put a plan into it, yes. and it's very cost effective, mm. and it's it's relaxing. It it makes a it makes a big difference when you go on a holiday. I'm not saying going to Nigeria. But if you go to Europe, if you go to America, Brazil, it's a big difference when you come back. And also, to just to add to that as well, don't ever believe that your nine to five will make you financial independent. No, the answer is no. Because in this country, the system, the way they did the system, your nine to five or one job that you have is only for you to pay bills. So you need an extra income which is what we're talking about now, multiple streams of income, to be able to save and make it as, as an investment. But nine to five, it's a no, no, no. That's just making you a bit comfortable. So are we saying that um, someone who doesn't want to go into business is going to have a tough time? Is that what we're saying? Because some people may not, say, oh, I'm not really business minded. So what do I what do I do if that's me? That's very correct. Not many people are business minded. For example, you could be a doctor, you could be a solicitor on very high income. That's okay. Then you can decide that that's your business. But if you're if you're if you're on low income and there's no way out from that low income, or you've been on the same salary. For the, for the last five years yes. and there's, there's no way out, then you must do something. You must do something. Yes, correct. No, not everybody wants to become a business person. But everybody's talented. You know, there's something in you that can bring you money. You know, do you know how to make people's hair? Are you a barber? Do you want to learn how a new trade? Do you want to do things on the internet and earn money? Are you a teacher? Do you want to start teaching children from churches, getting 20 pounds, you know, every week and so on and so forth. So there's something in you, there's a passion in you apart from the kind of work that we're doing. That will also help as well. Do you know, we live in a global world today. There are, there are Nigerian teachers that are teaching students from Nigeria, from Nigeria online. And I'm sure there's the same thing that most African and countries as well. They are, they are earning pounds sterling. They're in Nigeria. They're earning income teaching in a school. And they are teaching children here in the United Kingdom online. And they are making money. So wow. we must be, yeah. we must 
look for ways of making thinking money. Thinking out of the box. Yes, we must think out of the box. Now. Yes. This season is thinking out of the box. If you know how to make jollof rice, you know how to make good food, you know, try and package it. Take it one day to Sainsbury's, the prayer for the or to a Tesco. And you, you believe me, you start selling. Hmm. You cannot afford to work like the ones that we should now. You know, working all one's life up to 67 years old and then become dead broke. Mm. Mm. That's a food for thought. Thank you so much. Thinking outside of the box. And I think maybe that's where the um the challenge is, because sometimes you may have this hidden talent or hidden skill that you haven't really taken time to process. Someone wants to ask a question live. Uh, Mommy or Shijo, would you like to unmute? I believe that's that's yeah. Unmute yourself and then ask the question and then. Are you there, ma? Okay, we'll have to. Mommy, I'm, Shida, ready. You... I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Please, please go ahead and ask your question, ma. Well, um, I'm in the age bracket of between 70, 80. I retired about eight years ago now. When I was working, I used to have this life insurance. But suddenly they just stopped. They said I was uh, of the age or something like that. I was so shocked because I, it was Liverpool insurance or something. Yes, I've been doing this for like 15 years. And ever since then, I don't think I have a life uh, insurance. But uh, yeah, that's number one. Number two, investment. Um, I went to my bank recently to find out because I just have some of my, I have my state pension and my private pension in the bank saved. And I went to that and said, this money has been there for some time now. How do I, you know, uh, make it work for me or, you know, get something extra on top. And the lady suggested, I already have ISA. And then she suggested another ISA, which will yield maybe three and a half percent or something like that. So uh, I want to ask what's the best option, you know, to invest. And then the life insurance thing, you know, uh, for my age bracket. Thank you very much for that question. Um, one of the key elements is when you take out a life insurance, yes, it has a time factor. Mm -hmm. Um, you could be you could be 20 and decide mm -hmm. to take out a life insurance up until the age of 60 or the age of 70. I think in your own case, mm -hmm. when you took out your life insurance, mm -hmm. the end was when it stopped. Yeah, so that we really and unfortunately. In that company where you have that in life insurance, somebody yes. should have, 10 years ago, somebody should have called you and said, ma'am, your life insurance is coming to an end. What yes. do you want to have? Or it has 10 years. That is what we do. Yes. It has yes. 10 years. And what do you want to do? And there's another option on life insurance is called the whole of life. Whole of you life want, means if you, whole of life. Whole, whole. of life. The yeah, whole, whole of your life. The whole okay. of your life. Okay. The whole okay. of your life. Yeah. Uh -huh. And with, with that one, if you die at age 120, it's still going on. Mm -hmm. still going on. So on, that means you are covered until death. Okay. But the thing with that is that one is a bit, the premium for that is a bit more expensive, but okay. it's better. It's, be, it's better. And talking about life insurance in particular, our first three children, they have life insurance even before they got married. Why? Because with life insurance, when you are young, it's so cheap. And when you are young, you don't have high blood pressure. You don't mm. have backache. You mm -hmm. don't have all these ailments. Mm. And because these ailments, they add to the premium when you are taking out life insurance. Mm. That, is what I, that is the part of on life insurance. I will leave my wife to talk about the investment. No, yeah, no. Uh, it, before you go, before you leave the life insurance, is there any, um, uh, how do I put it now? Is there any where I can still have uh, my life insured, even though I have a will, and I thought if anything happens to me now, at least 
you know, my children won't suffer. But okay. can I still how, how, go how old are you now? Insurance? Sorry? How old are you now? Well, I'm 78 going 79. Okay. You can you can book an appointment, phone one of the numbers that we have there. Uh -huh. We can look at your case. We can't actually say to you, this is what is going to happen because we need to ask you. Assessment. We need to assess your situation, ask about your health situation okay. and all that to okay. determine the way forward. So please, okay. if you take one of the numbers there and give us a call, and then we will be able to assist you with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And on the, on the savings now. Yeah. Yeah, on the investment, yes. Investment. Yes, Ma, this investment also will be the same thing, Ma, so that we can see what you have um, okay. and then see what, yeah, see how we can help you, see how much you have. Okay. And you'll get, you'll be, yeah, you'll be able to um, look for a better way of doing that. The yeah, problem, the, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take her to that. The problem with the banks as, is that um, banks really don't really help people. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to sell mm. you know or like what we do so we yeah we we don't do all that as my husband said before every every year you know your situations is being reviewed okay so you know we know where you are okay so you have the number ma please call the number book all an right. appointment with us and we will take both of them together now and all talking right. about the investment we also have an investment company that will take you through what you have will advise you about the returns, which is okay. a lot higher than the return. The interest at the, the bank. bank. Yes, okay. yes, a lot, yes, yes. There's, there's not you. much the interest in the bank really now, to be uh -huh. honest. Yes. And that's why we always say to people, if you have money, honestly, try and buy a property. Within six months, you've got equity on it, or, you know, or buy a land. Um, I already have... put the money in the bank. Yeah, bank always yeah. use the money. Yeah, but I can't. I can't buy a property yet. I have already anyway. But uh, okay, I wish I were younger. I would probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question about if you were twenty one again. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Praise Thank God. Thank you so Thank much you for so answering much. that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for answering that. Okay, let's go to. Another question, what would you advise if someone had a certain amount in an ISA, would you leave it or take it out now due to the economic situations? Thank you so much for that, Ma. So it depends on the kind of ISA and also um, the interest, you know, that is coming on it. With that one also, we can't really answer it from the head. So it's better if you can please book an appointment with us. Let's look at what you have and let's see how we can help you. But to just say an answer off it, to be honest, we can't. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, someone else has also um, written that um, the whole of life is payable until your death. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. And then someone else has also written UK residents aged between 18 and 77 are eligible for life insurance. But that's still something you pay for. It depends on the life insurance company. That is not a fixed rule from one life insurance company to the other. So it's dependent on the life insurance company. Thank you so much. Now, you, when you were talking earlier, you spoke about pensions and, and then you touched on private pensions. How do you, what's the best way? Because there's so many... <laughs> liars out there how do you what's how do you do due diligence to making sure that your money is not going into a you know bottomless yeah, pit somewhere i think one of the one of the best ways of doing due diligence is ensuring that that company is registered in the financial conduct authority that is the one thing that you must find out and once you found out that then you are safe to you are safe to continue because no company will be registered with the financial conduct authority and mess about with your money so, so apart from them being registered, what should we be looking out for? Because obviously, maybe they're, so say for instance, I find 10 companies and they're all registered. So how what, what are the things I should look out for in a good company? Um, okay, the key things you need to look out for is in, in a good company is first of all, the longevity of that company, the longevity of that company. And first of all, most companies will show you 
statistics, they will show you graphs of how your pension will grow. And that's mm -hmm. something that you need to sit down with an intelligent uh, financial consultant that will take you through all that. And as you correctly said, it's, it's a good idea to visit about five or six of those companies, different ones. Make sure you go to their website, research their website, have a look there at their website. I know some dodgy companies have good websites, but have a look at their website and see what you feel about their website. And okay. it's always good also to get personal recommendation if possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, word of mouth. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. thank you. That That is really good. Thank you. Another question um, about stocks and shares. That's another, another funny area where you can either get it right or you can get it wrong. How would you mm -hmm. advise, if, particularly if you're a novice and you've never done one before, where, where do you start from? Okay, there are two ways to stock, stock shares. Yes. You can either do it yourself or you can get a company to do it for you. If you want to do it yourself, first of all, you it's like you want to become a doctor. You go to university, you, you go through the process. If you want to go into stock shares, yes, you must learn. You must learn, you must go to seminars, you must learn to know when to invest and when not to invest. That is if you want to do it yourself, but if you want the safety of uh, a house doing invest investing in your stock in shares, again, you go to your due, due, due diligence on the, on the kind of organization that is going to help you out. There are many names out there that are very reputable, actually, that are very reputable that can help you out there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And I have another question. Someone wants to know how much it costs to book a consultation with you. Thousands of pounds. <laughs> it's free of charge. Courtesy of pastor, it's free. When it's free oh. of charge without charge. Oh. Thank you so much, Amma. Thank you. So, so long you as you are paying your tithes. Yes. So long as, as you are a tight payer. As long as you are doing the 70, 10, 10. Yes. <laughs> In fact, could you reiterate on um on that 70, 10, 10, 10 again, please, Ma? Um, I think you touched upon it. Um, um someone's yes, asked that yes. question. Um, Oh, okay, ma. Thank you, ma. Yeah, what we're saying is that, um, you know, when we get our income, we always think the income is just for us and we do everything we want to do with it. But for us to become financial, because this is what actually helped us, for us to become financially independent, out of your income, 70%, that belongs to you. Just say this my money, expenditure. this is for my expenditure, yes. This is for my expenditure, do everything else we want to do with that 70%. Then keep 10% to say this 10%, no matter what, it's going straight to the house of God. This is my tithe. Nothing takes it from me. The next 10% is what you use as investment. Savings and investment. Yes, yeah, savings and investment. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It's savings and investments. So you can invest in the, with that. You can save with that 10%. And then the last 10%, it's for charities, Flexible. you know, exactly. So you need to, you know, to bless um, the widows, the orphans, the blind school, you know, different charity, African mission, you know. So you're sending your money as a seed, which I know it always comes back, pressed down, shaking together, running over. You can't miss it that Absolutely. time. You just find out that, that 70% that is remaining is more than enough for you. Fantastic. Thank you. And I'm really happy that you touched on this 7, 10, 10, 10. Because incidentally, in, in our parish this month, um, we've decided that it's a month of giving back. Because um, you know when the Bible talks about when you fast and says, is this the kind of fast that I ask for when you you know, exploit and marginalize the, the vulnerable out there. He says, no, no, no. The kind of fast I want you to fast is when you deal your bread to the hungry, you know. And um, so this month we've been looking at that, and I'm really happy that you've touched on that. So not only are we, and particularly if you're a Christian on this platform now, um, not only are we required to pay our 10%, which we pay to God, but also give a 10% back um, to 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 the various organizations, charity groups. Um, so thank you so much 
for reiterating that. Okay, so let me go back to another question. It says, what are other ways to save money as a young person instead of putting the money in a bank? How to start investing? And, and just to add on to that question, I also had another question in my mind. I know um, some of us use piggy banks. Um, and we put money in piggy banks and at the end of the year, you take it out and it could be um, a, a little present surprise. So what is your take on that? And then also, what is your take on, I don't know the English word for this, but maybe you know, it's called a job, you know, where maybe like 10 people meet together. I don't know, it's like cooperative or something. So 10 yeah, people yes, meet yes, together. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Um, Thrift. Thrift. Um, eh? What's it called? Thrift, I think. Thrift, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, there are many names for it depending on the country where you are from. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so what yeah. is your take? So in addition to that question, what is your take on on that? Piggy bank, the Ajol, and then how the methods of savings are? Please, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, first of all, piggy, piggy bank is very good for the young ones to teach them how to save. I, I don't expect an adult to have a piggy bank, really. It's more or less for the young children to Except if you want something in the house where you might say to yourself, okay, at the end of the month, I will go to the bank and put money, this money in the bank, except that for a piggy bank. Then this thrift or cooperative or a job, again, if you are going to start it, you do, you do due diligence on the people that are go, going to be in that cooperative. If it's a, if it's a church thing, you need to make, don't just say because you are going to the same church, you need to know more about that person. Is this the kind of person that will pay money when it is due? There will be no conflict. If it is work colleagues, if it is friends, make sure you do due diligence. And everybody must be working. Very important. Everybody must be employed. That is very, very key. Once you know everybody is employed, then you can start, you can start the process. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you plan when you're going to collect you plan for that collection that collection might even be a deposit for your for your property you never know it might it might be that so that's the piggy bank that's the thrift or cooperative and then you ask about um yeah so a young person is saying what are the other ways to save money as a young person okay. instead of putting the money in a bank how do you start investing okay it's always good as a young person to start with isa um, it's tax-free when you get to the limits. Um, you can opt for another ISA and then you start looking for investment companies uh, where you can invest. Maybe it's 50 pounds, maybe it's 100 pounds. You start looking for investors that will give you a high return. But one thing you must know is investing is, is, a, is a risky element. So today the interest rate might be high, tomorrow it might be down. So um, once you know that, then start investing. And when you get to the level where you can invest in property, then move into property. Nothing beats property. Mm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and even that um, tweet as well, start start small. Don't start with a thousand pounds putting together. Start as little as maybe a um, hundred pounds, you know, and um, a yeah, hundred pounds or 50 pounds thereabout. And then just test the waters. If it's okay, then you can then maybe the following year after that, the first one phases off, then you can start maybe 150. But it honestly is the best. I remember many years ago, you know, all those are old mothers. That's what a lot of them did at the time to take to send a lot of us to school. So it is it is a good one. You did it also. Yeah. I remember you did it. And we, we do it in our church, we're still doing it in our church now. We're doing 200 pounds every month in our church, but we started with 50. We started with 50. So we're doing 200 pounds and um, it's about maybe about 16 of us or so, you know. And that helps me. Every time I'm going for solemn assembly, I get my money between February ending and March. So I just use that money to get my ticket and other expenses as well. So it, it, it does work, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Uma. Thank you. Thank you. Um, someone's asking, I work as a civil servant. Do I still need an extra private pension? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you're an employee of the government. You have your uh, pension in place. Um, I think the key element of uh, being a civil servant is one, 
assumption is your income is not compared to the private sector and uh, the pay increase is not it's never it's never there it's, um, it's, and gone are the days where you can be a civil servant and be an empl empl employee for life no you have to look at other means also if you can afford to have a private pension have, the, have it on the side if you can afford it it's about affordability it's about having a budget that's the, that's why it's critical for you to have a budget when you have a budget and you, you think you can invest in additional pension there's nothing wrong with that because that because the pension that is linked to employment for example like the time of covid when covid happened many people were laid off so it depends on the policy you have with that company obviously it will not continue you know it will just be there but if you have your private one you are in control of that one okay thank you thank you that's it that's it thank you as in that's in the food for thought. Thank you so much. And then there's another question here. Do you know of any savings account that pay high interest that one can start putting off the 10%? I think if you start with ISA, yeah, if you start with ISA, because ISA is tax free. And when but you get I, to the limit. The sorry? ISA I know, um, because I opened an ISA a few years back and I just noticed gradually the interest rate went down and down and down. And what is what it is right now is just so ridiculous. It can't even be mentioned. So you see, the thing is with investments, um, it's a risk. Um, there are good times and there are bad times. If your eyesight is going down, you see, we we live in a controlled economy. This country now things are very bad. And it's a cycle. If you're an economist, if you look at this country, it's a cycle. Very soon again, it will pick up. There was a time where there was, you bought a property and there was no equity. If you want to sell it, there was no equity on the property. You couldn't even sell it. And suddenly the prices of properties have just boomed. So there's going to be a turnaround. This kind of, this government of the United Kingdom they are not a kind of government that will leave things to linger on. And that's why that is why there was an urgency to change the prime minister as quickly as possible to move things on. So things leave your eyes away. Please don't worry about it. Things, they, things will turn around. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And then um, one, one more question. Um, people have said that um, one of the ways to get on the property ladder is maybe you can go outside London buy a property you're not planning to live in it but you want to rent it out and then you're hoping to sell it and make a bit of money from it towards your deposit what are your thoughts on that that's, that's one of the things i said when i was doing my seminar i said it's, it's a good idea two options you can buy a property up north where it's a lot cheaper and then in a few years time when there's equity on that property um you can sell it off and use that equity to buy wherever you want to buy yeah it's 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 good it's good it's good it's a good idea we we did we did it also oh, we, did, we did thank it you. Yes. yeah yeah thank you so much sir um there's another question here how much do you need to start an isa you don't really any amounts any amount any amount really. yes yes okay. any amount really. okay. thank you i'm just looking at my other screen if you have a small business oh hold on how do you how do you start a company? Um, how do you start a company? Um, my recommendation is if you want to start a business, don't start as a company. Start as self-employed. And when that business grows, you can then register it with a company's house and become a limited company. I'm an accountant by profession also, so I can I've got good advice on that. But start small as a, as a self-employed um, organization, a business before moving to become a, a limited company. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And um, so I'm just going up to three screens. Okay, there's another question. If you have a small business at home, but it's not a regular income, would you advise to register the business? I think once you start... 
a business, either once it starts making money, register it as a as a, a self-employed. Yeah, register it. It doesn't matter if the income flux fluctuates from one month to the other because in reality, whatever income you get, you must pay tax on it. Yeah, whatever additional income you get, you must pay tax on it. So start small. And if you start small, your, you can always offset your expenditure against your income. So you don't have any tax to pay until when the business gains okay, ground. So, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I am just looking to see if there are any more questions. So sorry, Matt, there's a question on the chat that says um uh, what business assistance uh -huh. do you have in place? In place. Okay, yes. Yes, please. I don't ahead. understand that question. Oh, so maybe this person is asking um if if they want to, because you were saying like that there was a business um that they should contact oh, okay. you. So what kind of business is it? I think maybe that's what the person wants to know. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically just um, get our numbers down and uh, we would explain it to you. And, and there is, is a part-time business that can actually earn, just as my husband said, it can earn you an extra income between 500 to 1,000 pounds a month. Okay, thank you so much. So, <laughs> so I hope um, whoever asks that question, Please just take note of um, the numbers, um, which I believe if you go to the chat, the numbers are in the chat. Take hold of the numbers in the chat, and then um, you can contact Pastor Yinka. Okay, there's another. Sorry, one, just one, just bear with me one second. Okay, I think that's been I think that's been answered. Um, I can't see any more questions, but someone please point out to me if I've missed out any question and um, I'm looking at all the, the areas where the questions are. Thank you so much, Sama. Thank you so much for your time with us today. Um, Thank you. Um, Thank you for um, having us, ma'am. <laughs> yes, you know, I've been, I've been thoroughly blessed. I've learned so many new things tonight and I'm sure um, many of us, if not all of us, in fact, all of us um, would have gained and learned something new um, from your time of um, time spent with us tonight. And our prayer is that God himself will multiply you. He will enrich you in Jesus' name. You have God Amen. has used you to add color to our life. He has, and I'm sure he's used you to bring peace to many homes and many lives tonight. And I pray God will replenish you and, and give you peace as well in Jesus' name. Amen. And all your endeavors, he will make you to be successful Amen. as well in the name of Jesus. Um, it's been recorded, everyone, and we're going to make the recording available. And like um, Pastor Tunji and Yinka have said, um, you can get in touch with them um, for more details. So basically, um, what we've done tonight is just give you a taster. Um, there's no way you can fully cover all those elements in, in the space of one hour, 30 minutes that we have given this seminar tonight. So it's just a, a, a taste. Now we know more about pensions. We know more about savings, wills, yes. trust. You know, in fact, the one for me that's a biggie that I really would love for us, many of us to go away with, is that issue of wills. Um, please, please, it's so important. Um, I can see in the chat, thank you, Pastor, for organizing this program. It's a real eye-opener. You know, I've been getting messages and people have been saying how they've been richly blessed. So thank you so much, Samma. For coming thank you. tonight. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm sure we'll organize maybe just maybe we'll just pick one area um, and then mm -hmm. you can just elaborate on it. So maybe yes, in the future yes. we'll organize yes. that. So tonight was just an overview because there were so many topics that we had, you know, in the flyer that went That's out. Right. Just an overview. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So thank you so much for doing justice. And then you can see in the chats, um, people are sending in their. Their, their appreciation. Thank you so, so, so very much. Um, just Thank one you. announcement, um, talking about giving back um, in the month of December, all across the RCCG, we have what is called um, the Christmas Lunch on Jesus Initiative, um, where we, we have hampers that are given out. Um, that's our little way of giving back. So on the 20th of December, 
all across London. We, we're in Battersea. Um, so if you know anyone living in Battersea who is a little um, challenged, you know, because of the cost of living, please point them to us. Um, we're going to be giving out 100 um, hampers of turkey. Um, and they're quite huge boxes. Um, um, we wow. did so last year. Um, so we're going to be doing so again this year by the special grace of God, just to help, you know, giving back just our own little 10%. Um, I pray that a time is going to come where we're going to be able to give a lot more than that. But for now, Amen. we're going to be doing a hundred boxes. So if you know anyone who lives in Clapham Junction, um, Battersea, Clapham, all that area, please I impose them to us, you know, who are in, who are, who would love, you know, to enjoy Christmas without having to just open kind of big bins um, because we know that times are challenging, but we thank God we live in a community, you know, and we have been taught today, we're going to give back our 10%. So the next yeah. time you see somebody, you know, stretching out their hands, you know, begging for money, don't kiss your teeth and then walk by. No, do something about it. Give them um, something tangible. And I'm going to end with this little testimony that somebody shared. Um, she said um, she was walking by and then she walked by someone who was begging for, okay. for money. And I'm not sure what denomination she gave him. So let's assume she gave him 20 pounds. So she gave him um, 20 pounds. And then the guy, when the guy looked at the money, she said to the guy, when she gave it to him, Jesus loves you. The guy was so shocked by the amount that she gave that they're screaming, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You know, that was how moved he was by the amount she had given because he wasn't expecting it. So I just want to appeal to us. Um, that is one good way of getting out of a tight corner financially, giving back. It doesn't matter how tight things are for us. There are people out there who things are tighter, you know, for than for us, um, than what we are passing through. And then another story, um, which I'm going to also share. There was a little girl. Every time she walked by the store, you know, she would look at this, look at this particular toy, blink at this particular toy. She would do that and then walk away. But unknown to her, someone was observing her that this little girl, you know, just kept, kept looking at this, you know, display, looking at this, you know, um, toy, this particular toy that she liked. And then one day this person walks into the shop and buys the toy and gives it to her. And then when she gets it, the first thing that, she, that came out of her mouth, she said, are you Jesus? She said, are you Jesus? Because only Jesus can do a thing like that. Oh. Only Jesus can do a thing like that. So let's go out there and touch somebody. That's, that's all I'm going to leave us with tonight. Um, praise the name of the Lord. Um, I know you're pastors, um, Pastor Tunji and Pastor Yinka. Can I crave your indulgence, Pastor Tunji, to please pray for us, particularly for our finances, you know, because you, you're a pastor and then you're also a financial coach. Thank you, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, Almighty and everlasting God, King of Kings, we just thank you for the seminar we have had today. Thank we thank you, Lord Almighty God, that the word says that you will supply all our needs according to your riches by Christ in Jesus' name. Father God, we believe you have said your word does not return back void in the name of Jesus. So if your word says it is possible, it shall be possible in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray for anybody here going through one challenge or the other, in particular on their finances. Almighty and everlasting God, open a new door for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, all debts, credit cards, private loans, car loans, Father God, they will be written off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we pray that you will turn our hearts around, that we will, be, we will have a heart of givers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father God, King of kings, Jehovah. We pray for those who have been in the same employment for many years and are not yielding much return. Father God, open a new chapter for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Amen. God, we pray, Lord Almighty God, you are King of glory. We pray for our finances. Father God, many of us have been living on, on debt. Father God, over the years. Father God, let there be a turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, my God, King of kings, during this time of cost of living challenges, Father God, it will not reach our homes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. In amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 amen.
Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, that was so powerful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. We thank really, you so much, Matt. really appreciate you for coming tonight. We're very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you. I know you're very, very busy, but you've carved out this time to spend with us. We're very, very. That's busy. well done. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank, <laughs> you. Done, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More anointing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We are going Amen. To rest. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for you. coming. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, everyone, for coming yeah. tonight. Thank we are you. very, very thank grateful. You. Thank you. Praise the name of the Please Lord. Please come back again. We need more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you've heard it, pastors. We need more. We need more. This we need is not more. At any yes. time. It could be any time, but this is this is an eye opener. Yeah, it's an thank, you very much. thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Lola. Love you guys, you. everyone. Thank you so much for logging thank in tonight. Thank you, Pastor Lola. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a lovely you. evening. And everyone, God bless, bless you. Weekend. And Bye. until Bye. next time, uh, the special grace of God. You, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to get our phone number from Pastor Lala if you yes, need more yes, questions. Yes, yes. You know, yes. Just press the number. Do, and then, even if we are busy, we'll call you back or text you back. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye